All right, everybody, what's up? It's your boy Salty Redcorn. I'm back with an ill-prepared car repair video. So I have a 2004 Chevy Silverado 2500. It's not an HD. Uh, it's two-wheel drive. It has a six-liter V8 and a 4L ADE. Um, I'm having a lot of trouble with the <clears throat> intake uh, throttle position sensor codes. I'm throwing a lot of codes and basically I'll be driving down the road. Reduced power will come on the dashboard and the truck will get thrown into some like really kind of a choppy idle. Um, so what I've been doing for now is with a <clears throat> very cheap code reader, um, just erasing the codes and it goes back to normal. Uh, now I've tried to fix a ground that I thought it was possibly from, you know, internet searching. Um, wasn't that uh, i did reroute the ground from the main harness across the intake to the front of the alternator so i have a good ground there uh, i don't believe it's that i've replaced the the throttle body with an expensive hitachi brand one um and i don't believe it's that so <clears throat> looking at the looking at the connector here there is a little corrosion inside the connector it looks a little green and that's probably not good. That means that some of the corrosion probably goes back into the harness here. So I bought this pigtail off of Amazon. None of the colors match, um, but that's okay because it's an eight pin connector. The connector fits just snugly, fits just right. Plus this connector was broken. Um, the clips don't hold it in place anymore, but I don't believe that's, I don't believe that it's doing it because it's loose. I think it's a corrosion issue. The codes I'm getting are for like low voltage at the the, posi the throttle position sensor, low voltage at the pedal. So, I don't know, this is just another step. It's getting really annoying for me to drive. And um, we're gonna go ahead and replace this. And it's, since the, the wires don't match color-wise, I'm just gonna replace one wire at a time. And I'm not gonna use butt connectors. I'm gonna simply twist them together and I'm gonna use duct tape, or I mean duct tape. I'm gonna use electrical tape here to electrical tape them back together. Um, hopefully I'll be able to speed up that part of the video uh, so that you guys don't have to watch me sit here and do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and strip these wires down right now with my Leatherman. I'm using a Leatherman Free P2. This is an excellent tool, I've had it for a while and I don't know where my dedicated stuff is right now. I'm trying to clean up my truck. Uh, my truck gets very messy after a long week's work. So I'm going to go ahead and just pre-strip all these. And I'm going to leave enough meat on them so that I could twist it good. And we're going to, we're going to move on. We're going to see if this is the problem. Now, if this isn't the problem, then I'm going to go bang my head against the wall somewhere. Um, because I've definitely been struggling with this for a little while. Why don't you just take it to the mechanic, Salty Redcorn? Well, because the mechanic's guess is just, just as good as mine, in my opinion. Uh, I've been fixing my own vehicles for a very, very long time, basically since I got one. Um, I've only been to the mechanic maybe once or twice, and it was because someone else forced me to, and it was always a terrible experience, except for the last time. The last time we went to the mechanic, um, was to do the timing belt in my wife's Honda Pilot. And I was happy to do that and they were very good. They did a great job and they were very reasonable on their prices. That's Economy Tire in Burgaw. The guy's name is Mike, if you guys are interested. He's a very, very good guy and his prices are fair and he does a great job over there, right? So, but as far as something like this goes, it's not a hard part. It's not something that you can initially see. There's not a lot of information online. There sure is a lot of information online about reduced power mode, but there's not a lot of solid information. And the problem is, is that there's so many variables involved with this job. So many different things that it could be. It just doesn't make sense to me to pay someone else to spend time and diagnose it when I could diagnose it and do the same thing that they're going to do, trying not to throw parts at it. But the truck has 
over 300,000 miles, like 330,000 miles, uh, maybe over that now, but it is a good truck and it's pretty clean. So it's definitely worth my time. So I have these all stripped out now. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to unplug the old one and I'm gonna plug this one in. Maybe not plug it in, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it as reference so that I know exactly which wire I'm replacing when I'm replacing it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut back, I'm gonna plug it in, and I'm gonna see how far I can go back. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna to go to the first injector because that's a little too far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little bit before the first injector. You can see right here. I'm gonna go back to about here and I'm gonna just Trace the one wire at a time, I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to splice them together one at a time. And hopefully that does the trick. So here goes nothing. I'm making my first cut. This is a little bit frightening because it is the first is it's the main engine harness. So it is a little frightening. Plus these wires that are originally on here are very, very small, low voltage wires. And it just makes me a little nervous working with them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to twist them together, make sure that I get a good tight twist. Then I'm going to fold each one back over itself and I'm gonna tape it. The reason I'm not using butt connectors is because I'm not exactly sure if this is going to work. If it does work out, then the chances are that I may go back and put wire uh, waterproof butt connectors on here. But as of right now, the waterproof butt connectors are more expensive than the plug that I'm replacing. So it doesn't make a ton of sense. To do so right if I knew exact if I knew that this was the exact problem maybe things would be a little bit different but I don't exactly know what's going on here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do this and if it works we're gonna run with it all right so first things first I'm gonna do the top and bottom here let's go ahead and cut this one back I also want to make sure that I cut enough of the wire back to get the rot out, right? Because if it is a rotten wire with corrosion in it, we want to get rid of that. So I'm going to take my time twisting the wires and making sure that I get a nice tight twist on them so that we have a good connection. The first two wires I've taken off look clean, not no corrosion on them. So that's a good sign, right? Try to stay positive about this whole thing. And just keep trucking along here, right? We got eight wires in total. I'm almost done with number two, so this isn't gonna be super long. Maybe I don't need to fast forward. All right, so that's wire number two. Doing it this way ensures that I do not confuse any of the wires. It's very important that the wires all go back in the same position because these computers are very sensitive uh, to look to the low voltage, right? If there's low voltage, if there's a low voltage drop, the computer is going to know and more than likely multiple things are not going to work, right? So we're going to do our best here to get everything right. Yep, this will be tight. <clears throat> like I said, hopefully this works out for me. That way, if you guys are having the same problems, then maybe this will offer you some insight 
and you'll be able to fix your problem too. Because I think that this is probably something that's somewhat common on these old Chevrolets. It's funny to say that, these old Chevrolets. To me, when I was young, this truck was brand new and uh, I thought it was the cat's meow. Now, this truck is 20, 20 years old, 20 something years old. And I finally got one. <laughs> finally got one, guys. I made it. I'm somebody. All right, so here we have the brown wire. He's going to be our next victim. That wire looks a little stiff, and I think the brown one is the wire, if I'm not mistaken here. I'm starting to think maybe the brown wire is... The one that's green in the in the pin as far as like the corrosion i think the brown mi wire might have been the culprit but again we're gonna find out as we go here what's what where i cut it off seemed like it didn't have any corrosion on it which is a good thing crossing my fingers letting jesus take the wheel and yeah, that's that. So a couple months back, if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you guys know I normally drive a 97 Dodge Ram 2500 HD with the legendary Cummins diesel. And what else is legendary about it is the bad transmissions that they come with. So I was towing my camper to South Carolina and I lost overdrive. We were too far to turn around, so I kept going. And knowing that I was gonna have a problem, we went camping, made it all the way to South Carolina, we camped. And on the way home, sure enough, blew the transmission up. And when I say I blew it up, I blew every piece of it up. Transmissions in that truck are legendarily very expensive as well. Looking at about five to $6,000 to have it built. So that's out of the question for me right now. So much out of the question that I bought a separate truck to keep going with life, get to work, do all the things I needed. I was excited about this truck when I got it because it has four doors, right? And I have three boys. So having doors is a must. Right? So I was definitely excited about the doors. Excited that it's like a nice, quiet, two-wheel drive truck. It's inconspicuous. My other truck is completely covered with Linex. And it's a hot rod. It's a hot rod for sure. I always joke and say that it's like driving a pirate ship around. Right? Um, which if you've ever been in one, then... You might know what I'm talking about. But the idea is that I'm going to drive this truck until I'm able to get the funds to fix the Dodge. Because the Dodge has never given me problem except for the transmission, which was a big problem. But I'd like to have it built to the hilt so that I don't have to worry about it ever again. It's been the most reliable truck I've ever owned. And I plan to keep it forever. I will have that truck forever. I'm never going to sell it and I'm never going to junk it. The Dodge actually has less mileage than this truck at about 238, 240,000 miles the Dodge has on it. And what a good truck it is. So <clears throat> once I get that truck back together, I will keep this truck as a spare because I really, really don't like to be helpless. Uh, I don't like to not be able to get it done myself, so to speak. So we're going to keep this truck around and most likely do whatever repairs that it needs. And I'll either keep driving this truck daily and use the Dodge exclusively for camping or fun. Or I'm just going to go back to driving the Dodge every day. So, 
that's my plan and I'm sticking to it. It can be so easy to give up on projects sometimes. It can be so discouraging and I myself struggle with that and I have my whole life, right? When things get tough, you kind of give up on them and just throw them out. <laughs> Throw them in the garbage or sell it for less than you have into it. But in this case, when I was young, I had a lot of diesel trucks and I always wanted the Dodge Cummins with the 12 valve <clears throat> Cummins engine in it, 5.9 liter. And then when I got one, it was everything I ever hoped and dreamed for, right? I'll show you guys at the end of the video. It's right over there. I'm using it as a garbage collector for right now. So once we're done with this repair, I'll take you guys over there and you guys can take a look. Okay, so I'm down to two wires left. This isn't gonna be much longer. You're not gonna have to hear me talk too much longer. <clears throat> and then we'll be able to test it out. Now, testing it out is gonna be a little bit hard because the problem's intermittent, but it's been so, um, it's happened so often recently that every time I start the truck, it gives me a problem every single time. I mean, I'm clearing this code probably uh, 20 times a day. And that's no exaggeration. 20 times a day, I need to clear the code. And it's really bothering me. When I get when I go to leave a customer's house, I'm sitting outside, um, starting my truck over and over again. But at this point, I have the technique down <laughs> pretty good to the point where uh, I don't even really shut it off now. If it happens while I'm driving, I simply throw it in neutral, clear the code while the truck is running, and throw it back and drive and get on my way. Um, as far as it being a voltage problem, I definitely believe that because it usually happens when, like not on startup, but when it happens, say when I'm driving, usually when I'm push the brake pedal which would, would you know pushing the brake pedal causes uh, voltage to go elsewhere and could cause a low voltage situ uh, low voltage situation which typically wouldn't be a problem but seeing that I potentially have a wire issue or a plug issue cross my fingers is hoping that's what it is then that would make sense right you know, it makes sense that if there wasn't already barely enough voltage going through the wires for it to happen, uh, for it to stay running the way it's supposed to, then it would make total sense that sending voltage elsewhere would cause somewhat of an issue with the voltage up front, right? So we're gonna tape up the last wire here and I'm gonna take the camera, walk you to the inside we're gonna start the truck and I'm either gonna make a really happy sound or I'm gonna make a really sad sound. So here we go guys, all the wires are here spliced in and the plug is plugged in. Move this stuff so it doesn't fall down. And let's go, let's go start her up, all right? All right, so without clearing the codes, I'm just gonna go ahead and start it up and see what happens right off the bat. So right off the bat, I have, I don't have the reduced engine power code, but I'm in reduced power, yep. Well, that sucks. 
That potentially means it's not the issue. Let's go ahead and clear the code. I'm using this code reader. Clear codes. Yes. Ignition on, engine off. Oh, I think I lost connection at the plug. My son was pulling on it. Oh, and also I don't have the key in the on position. Let's try again. So first I need to diagnose. Erase codes, engine off, key in the on position. All right, the codes are cleared. Start her up. Change engine oil. So as of right now, I am not in low power mode, but I'm gonna do a couple tests here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut it off. Start it up. And we're gonna see if we can just get it to kick into reduced power mode. If you guys haven't tried this stuff, it's pretty good. I don't normally drink soda, but this is good stuff. The purple can got to me. There's my boy, Abel. Oh, he's down there. He's my helper. So, right now we're not, oh, there it goes. Come on. All right, so that didn't fix it. You guys want to can you hear that and this is what happens it's very choppy it's running in like a closed loop type thing this is the ground wire that i replaced super disappointed right now but hey you got to try stuff and so i'm going to go back to the drawing board now and i'm going to chase down some other stuff and i'll make another video on it even though this is a failure i'm still going to post this video because it still shows the process of what I did and probably turn this into a series, right? This isn't normal channel stuff for me, but it is what it is. Still gonna put the information out there in case it helps somebody else, right? So whatever, until next time, stay fresh, stay sharp, stay clean, stick to the channel. I have some optic pistol optic reviews coming up and I have some really cool other stuff, some gold, and I have a whole bunch of cool um firearm content that's coming up right and some knife stuff too right we're not going completely off script but peace out